Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech, and in today's video guys, I'm going to be bringing you Q&A number 16. Now, I will say I'm terribly sorry for, you know, the lack of videos recently, but, you know, I have been, you know, pretty busy with university work. Also, it was my, it was, uh, yeah, my birthday on the 15th. I've had my races off, I built a PC for my sister, it's been a lot of things going on. But yeah, nevertheless, I'm going to be filming a few videos today, so I can get, you know, a few videos out for, you know, the rest of, you know, this month. And, um, yeah. One of them is going to be a build guide on building my sister's computer, and I'm also going to be announcing a giveaway for the end of this year. Where I'm going to be giving away uh, one or two CPU coolers and uh, also something else. Anyway, guys, yeah, let's kind of jump into this video and um, yeah, let's uh, you know answer some of your guys' questions from Q and A 15, and also you know some other videos uh, that you know you've posted some comments on. So to get started, first question is from Alex B. Can anyone please tell me what the Intel Core i7-K values mean? For example, in this build there's a 4770K one, and on other builds there's a 4790K or something. What does the something K mean, or, or, t or tell you? Uh, is is the like higher or lower value better or something? Now typically, the first digit in any Intel, um, you know, SKU processor, that first digit, so now there's you know there's the scarlet chips which you know begin with the six and all the Haswell chips you know begin with a four that first value is kind of the series um, of what chip it is and that typically you know you know lets you guys know what architecture and uh, you know what manufacturing processes have you know they've used to make the CPU and then um, all the other kind of numbers um, typically the higher the number uh, after that the better it is so for example the 4770k is a 3.5 gigahertz chip which tables to 3.9 gigahertz and then the 4790k for example is um, yeah 4 gigahertz chip which, which tables to 4.4 gigahertz typically if you just want my kind of um, you know kind of really simple answer to this get all you all you need to do is um, yeah buy a chip which has a high frequency and a high core count. That's all you really need to do with, with the two chips that I've just kind of explained: the 4770K and 4790K. Typically, the higher number, the better it's going to be. But you'll know this by the price. And typically, you know any kind of high-end kind of i7 these days is going to do you very very well for gaming. So yeah, that's about it. That's all you really need to look for. But typically, the higher the number, the better it's going to be. And you know typically. You are going to have the same amount of cores if you're just looking at i7s, but you know you're going to have that higher kind of frequency. There we are. So next question is from Hager Taylor. Uh, for the next Q&A, do you recommend GPU brands such as Zotac, Palette, X of X, and Powercolor? Comparing these, um, uh, I've lost where I was. Yeah, comparing uh, the prices of these brands for the 960, these brands are cheaper most of the time, but seem uh, as good quality as the mainstream brands. So what should be the smarter choice? A slightly cheaper. Zotac on MSI 960. I I have no now uh, recommending any of, of these brands. Um, to be honest, my friend Ben did pick up a, um, a Zotac Palette GTX 970. And to be honest, that performs better than the MSI uh, 970. Um, I, I'm forever telling people this and the fact that that card costs less. And it gains, you know, one or two FPS in the Valley Benchmark, which to be honest, you don't get many FPS in the Valley Benchmark. So it's a pretty big deal. And at the end of the day, you know, my friend Ben did spend less on his GTX 970 and it's better performing. Now, I will say the cooling solution on that, it, it you know, it is a little bit flimsy. And I have observed that actually the PCB on that card was a lot thinner and typically... Um, from my understanding, you won't be getting as good of overclocks on that Zotac card just because it's, you know, cheaper. But, you know, if you aren't looking to overclock and typically aren't bothered about noise and maybe aren't wanting to keep your card for 10 plus years, then go for these cheaper brands. You know, go, go for it. Um, you know, they're, they're creating, you know, the really cheap cards because they can and people are going to buy them. And, you know, they are genuinely good. So go ahead, buy a, a Zotac or Palette card. Feel free, grab one and chances are, you know, you're maybe going to get better performance, you know, believe it or not. So next question is from uh, Kelly Raspin. Uh, nice to see a new Q&A video, Dan. Uh, one question, though. Just noticed uh, the sound card next to uh, the GPU. Why do you have a sound card? I've always thought they were pretty useless um, uh, in today's... Oh, I've lost what I was. Um, this phone, good God, it drives me crazy. Man. Why do you have a sound card? I've always thought uh, they were pretty useless to have these days with onboard being that good now. Now, believe it or not, the onboard on my motherboard is absolutely shite. It's terrible. Now, when I'm listening through speakers, it is fine. But when you plug in any kind of headphones into the, you know, the, the onboard, um, you know, port on the motherboard, 
you can hear some really strange electrical noise and especially um uh, you know when you're doing things on your computer including just moving your mouse these uh you can hear the noises and the signals changing depending on what you're doing in you know on your computer and it's it's really strange and it's really it is oh man it's oh it's weird it's really weird you shouldn't be able to hear that and that's you know the reason i did buy my sound card and um, the sound card i have is the uh the zona yeah the asus zona dsx i believe and it's brilliant it's absolutely fantastic i can do whatever i, I want to do on my computer now and i do not know i do not really hear anything and to be honest the uh, the software you get with the asus uh, sound card is brilliant uh, the equalization and stuff you have so much control and i tell you if, if you want loads of bass you can have loads of bass you know whatever the, the equalization software is brilliant for the card it fits in a times one slot as well so it's, it's it's really good i would recommend it um but typically yeah for many other boards you are right on board audio is pretty damn good but on my board it's not maybe my board's faulty in the audio department but um i don't yeah i don't know but yeah typically sound cards are not needed but in my case i you know feel that you know they are with some electrical noises that i can hear and our next question is from dean Mulder. hey hi dan i asked uh, last week why you were holding a badger and today you hid your badger was that because of my comment great q a um well i don't know if you can see the badger today but um total coincidence yes total coincidence uh, next question is from Ben uh, Perlers. Uh, Dan, how come my GTX 970 Jetstream had a minimum of 25 FPS on Valley Benchmark and yours is 31? Now, this uh, comment was from uh, the review of the uh, the Palette uh, 970 of you know my friends Ben's. I did I, I did review that one. Um, why is it lower? Um, maybe because you have a slower CPU. If it's not that, uh, there'll be something. There'll be some other variable. In your PC, um, I, don't, I don't know. It'd be something. One thing I would check actually is that um, is that you know your card is actually reaching its boost clock because if it isn't and it's at a base clock, that could be the reason for the lower FPS. And typically, you know, if you you know do increase increase the fans on on your card, um, you know your card will be able to reach the boost clock. Still, uh, Nvidia graphic cards are reliant on temperature a lot, and if your card is I think I think it's 80 degrees I think on, on most of the video cards. If if your card gets to 80 degrees, and you know the manufacturers, um, you know do program the fans on on the card to not go over a certain percent, your card will slow down, and you know you will just be reaching that base clock. That's probably the reason that that you're getting less in the Valley Benchmark. But I wouldn't really worry about it. Just check out them temps, see if you are reaching the the um, the boost clock all the time. If not, then I I I, I honestly don't know. Um, probably just got to do with a CPU being a little bit slower, or some other variable. As I've said, it could even be the fact that um, I run Valley on an SSD. Maybe you've got it installed on hard drive. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, I really wouldn't worry about it. If you're getting good frame rates in games, then that's all you really need to be bothered about, really. So our next question is from uh, Little EDM. Hi, I just bought the M, oh the uh, Corsair RM 850, and I can hear a little uh, coil whine type of sound. Uh, it's not loud. Uh, I need to uh, be close to the power supply to hear it. Is that normal? Should I worry? The PSU is one day old. Um, typically, uh, you do sometimes hear a little bit of electrical noise from power supplies. I personally do have an RM 850. One thing I've noticed with that is when I turn my PC off, as in, as in, you know, just click the shutdown button. Um, I, I can hear a little bit of like coil whine when the PC's off. I don't hear it when it's on, but when it's off, I hear a, a really, a really faint kind of really strange electrical noise. So what I all always do is flip the switch on on the back, and that's it. It's gone. But um, in your case, if it's a really faint sound, there shouldn't be nothing wrong at all. If you know your bill has been up and running out for you know for a few days, and you know you've been able to play games and stuff. Then it should be completely fine. Um, yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm really going to say. Really, it should be fine. Yes, there we are. And the next question is from is it Zenton? I don't, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Um, I have a, I have a four gig uh, MSI GTX 960. My GPU does not slot in as as cleanly as as uh, yours does, and seems to be missing a part. Is it a backplate though? I don't have, I don't really know what context. Uh, this is uh, talking, but um, does not fit in the slot. 
just make sure you plug in a GPU in, in a time 16 slot. If it's a time 16 slot and you know the GPU can fit in, just give it a really firm push and you should hear it click in. Just make sure that you've you've pressed the tab to unlock the PCI Express slot. So if you don't do that, then yeah, you'll damage your board a little bit. And yeah, the clip will kind of snap off. But yeah, there we are. Just, just give it a push and yeah, you should be fine. I don't know what context this comment was written in, so... Yes, there we are. So this question is from Dan. Uh, Hi Dan, could you help me out? I have put uh, the PC together, but um, when I put it on, but turn it on, there we are, I get a message saying reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media in selected boot device and press a key. I'm unable to access the BIOS, do you know what has gone wrong? Um, so you usually get that error when you've got to install an OS, when you know you know the hard drive's empty and it can't detect anything. If you're unable to get into the BIOS, uh, take your battery out your motherboard, or just short the the clear CMOS on on your board with a screwdriver or a paperclip. And uh, you know when you turn your PC back on, just you know spam that delete button and F2 button together. Just spam the buttons like crazy. If you still can't get into the BIOS, I would contact the place where you got the board from and uh, you know request an RMA because you should be able to get into the BIOS relatively easy these days by just you know clicking the button even once um so yeah if you can't get in the bios and you, you know you've cleared your cmos there's something definitely wrong and yeah as i said just get the board arrow made and that'll be about it all good to go next question is from the dutch slinky do you need to install a driver for your cpu the cpu is one of these devices which you don't need to install a driver for there is a driver for CPU, and Windows does take care of that, so, you know, it isn't that daft of a question, which I thought it was um, uh, when I first, uh, you know, saw this posted, but no, you don't need a, a CPU driver. Windows does take care of this, like many, many drivers. The only real ones you need to install is a chipset driver, a USB 3 driver, if that's applicable, audio driver, and your graphics driver. That's all you really need to install these days. And to be honest, Windows, especially Windows 7, 8, and also 10, um, as soon as you have installed a LAN driver, typically Windows, through Windows Update, can install all of the other ones for you, which, to be honest, is pretty damn good, and uh, I heard the support for that in Windows 10 is fantastic, so if you're rocking Windows 10, then you maybe only need to install a LAN driver, and then, you know, Windows can take care of it for you, which is pretty damn good, to be honest, um, you know, from what I've found, um, when I posted my build on how to build the gaming PC, many people are, you know, feel confident building PCs, but they don't really know how to install the drivers and found that the difficult part, which to me is pretty interesting. Um, as you know, installing drivers is just a, you know, it's just a process of, of spamming that next button until the installation is done. So yeah, interesting, but no, in, in your case, no, you don't need to install a CPU driver. There we are. So the next question is from Matt Richardson. Hi Dan, thanks for your reply. I built a system with an AMD FX6300 and an Asus, and an Asus M5A97 Revision 2 with, um, with uh, uh, RAM with 1600MHz and it works awesome. But I heard the FX6300 integrated memory controller is 2000MHz. So does this mean that if my motherboard supports 2400 speed memory, does the speed of my memory on my motherboard uh, throttle? Yeah, would it throttle to 2000MHz? Typically, if you have RAM that's, um, that supports the board, the board will allow the RAM to you reach its max speed. Even if the processor doesn't support the max speed uh, and the board does, you should be able to get away with it. The i7-4790K that I have, I think it only officially supports memory up to uh, 1,600 megahertz, but because the board supports memory up to 3,000 megahertz, you know, my 2,400 megahertz kit, of course, uh, RAM works fine. I don't know if that's the case in, uh, well, on AMD boards, because on Intel boards, you can enable the, um, the Intel Extreme Memory Profiles, or XMP, and that just takes care of it for you, you know, dials in the voltages and all the, all the cast latency for you, you know, so it's all good. If I were you, just do a little bit of research. I think AMD have an equivalent to the XMP, so if you can enable that in, you know, your BIOS, if you are thinking of getting, you know, the high-speed RAM, and yeah, you should be good to go. Next question is from, I'm going to really butcher this name, uh, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to offend you that's the one that's what i was looking for i love the series then a question if i may i have a 400 watt superpower superpower super super flower uh 
80 plus gold PSU with an R5 at 45.90 in it. Up until now I had a GTX 750 Ti, now I want to get a 970 over the 390 in the hopes to maintain uh, my PSU. I hear so often that you need a minimum of 500 watts with a 970, but I don't get it. A 970 is like 175 watts and the CPU drains 84 watts. Is my existing PSU enough? Cheers. It's really good to know that you, you know, you do have an understanding of what each component use. You've got to remember that case fans and all that kind of stuff, you know, case fans, hard drives, even RAM, the board, for example, they all, you know, do consume power as well. But I think in your case, you should be fine. However, you know, I wouldn't recommend um, getting anything higher than a 970 you have you know you have got an understanding that you know the 390 uh, from AMD does suck a lot of power you're not going to be able to install that thing um, with a 400 watt PSU but you should you should be okay with a 970 if not though um, you will just have your PC shut off when you know you do get in a game and you, you know the, the graphic card is you know wanting more power if the PSU is not able to deliver that it'll turn off so you know do keep that in mind if you do get the GPU and yeah you, you know you might need to go out and buy a PSU afterwards but uh you should be fine you should be fine um but don't take my word on that there we are now the uh, last question is from um, is it Rajan Rahman uh, thanks for a nice episode I have a question and it's confusing for me when I think about graphics cards which is more important to choose uh, a graphic card? Um, but bus width, memory size, GPU megahertz, or memory type? I know my question is pretty dumb, but uh, but you pretty dumb, but you know we are entry level user, uh, entry level user of gaming PC, and want to learn more about technology. So please post the answers as soon as you can. My English is so poor. If doing any kind of mistake, please forgive me. Thank you. No problem. In terms of graphic cards. Um, I I just purely look at the amount of cores. Now, typically, CUDA cores are a little bit faster than uh, the stream uh, cores that you know AMD have, have on their cards. But typically, you just want to be looking at the cores and the megahertz. If you are comparing, you know, just AMD GPUs or, or you know just comparing Nvidia GPUs, you can just look at the core count. The more cores, the faster the card's going to be, typically. And that if you are, for example, say comparing, uh, say two GTX 780s or so, not 780s, 970s, even though they do exist. Yeah, if you're comparing two cards which have the same amount of cores, one of the higher uh, frequencies is going to be a little bit faster, but you know, typically will cost more. And that is, you know, typically just just the case between buying, say, an MSI or a Palette or an EVGA, say, 970. There we are. But yeah, typically it's just uh, just look at core count and the um, the frequency. If you are wanting to game at high resolutions, I would recommend getting um, a card above, you know, say two or three gigabytes. If you're looking to game at 1440p or 4K or any you know high resolution, you need a card ready with four gig of VRAM. And that's the kind of only real things you need to look at. Bus whip. I suppose it's good to do a little bit of research into that, but quite frankly. There's no real point, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, there's no real point. I haven't going to even go into what that is. But yeah, there we are. Anyway, guys, that's kind of the end um, of this q and uh, I really do enjoy creating the Q&As. The so they're pretty easy to make. And, you know, you guys really do appreciate me answering your questions kind of in video format. So, you know, it kind of benefits both of us. There we are. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Pretty soon there's going to be a guide on how to build, you know, my sister's computer. You know, I did, you know, did film that. And I reached the 20 minute cap on the DSLR, there we are. I'm not too sure where it cut out, but yeah, I was just saying, you know, thank you guys for watching. There'll be a PC guide, you know, build video of me building my sister's PC soon. And yeah, if you guys do have any, any kind of comments or, or any questions for the next Q&A, do post them down in the, in the uh, as is near said, description in the comment section. And um, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be sure to, you know, print screen some and, um, you know, you know, answer some of them on the show in the second week of January. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, comment and also subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.